Hello, my name is Nyako Nakar and I'm from Spain. I'm a visionary artist and I met Jack a long time ago, 23 years ago in Barcelona. We've been companions from that day, helping each other. I met him in a very, very nice situation. He was doing a performance with Lindsay Kemp in uh, Fundación Joan Miró in Barcelona and I was going around walking and then I saw a small garden and I went into this garden and there was Jack and he was wearing a a suit like a, like a, a tunic, no? Yes, a robe. A robe to yeah. the floor? Yeah. And he was wearing a mask of a sun without eyes. With and rays with really? rays yeah. and he was dancing with the wind and I was very impressed by the, his his feeling of the performance and I, I sat on the floor and I cried and it's like I had a feeling I was going to meet this person and um, we began to go together mm. and then in that time I was a person where I was quite lost I didn't have work and I, I was quite hungry I didn't have food and then I began to work with Jack and it was very difficult to begin to work with a blind person because you have to be all the time looking where he goes and looking in the street when if there's objects, if you find people, if you find... It's quite complicated and he then teach me how to walk better. You remember I was walking like with small steps? Yes, your little, little steps. Little steps and you say, walk properly. I said, use your hips. You, you <laughs> Swing your hips out. And then, it's like I was going, I was running everywhere and I never arrived anywhere. That was my, my situation. And with him helping me, I began to, to learn to walk again. He was like a baby and, and to look around and to see the cars. And then we had some problems in the beginning yeah. because it's not easy to, to work with someone blind. It's quite a challenge. Really. How to put up with a person who's blind. Yeah. It's very difficult. There's many things happen in life yeah. when you're with someone who is yeah. blind. Good and bad ones, both. I would like to answer you some questions, Jack. Yeah. Yeah? Yes, I want to answer them. Okay. Yeah. Did, did, did you always want to be a performer when you ever were a since child? I, yes, I can tell you honestly. Ever since I was born, I, I was entertaining as, even as a baby. And when I was about two, I found a dress that my mother had. I put my mother's dress on. It was very long then, of course. And her shoes and a hat and a bag. And I walked down Freehold Street. What's right. that? What's Freehold Street? Free Sto Freehold Street is the number three. Number yes. three was where I was born. But where? In Leeds. Ah, Leeds. See, Le yes, Leeds. Yeah. And <laughs> you went down the street wearing this thing? Yeah. And I, I went into a churchyard nearby, very big church, and it seemed massive. With this costume. And I was sitting, standing there, not doing anything really, just standing, feeling, <laughs> feeling strange. And my mother came finally, and she didn't wallop me, which I thought she might. What does wallop me? Whack me, slap. Oh, I slap you. Yeah, no, she didn't. Oh. And then she took me out, and I went home with her. And then you've been performing from that day. Yeah. 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 I performed at school. What the, What things did you perform in the school? Plays. Oh. There's a play called. Bodesia to the rescue. It was quite a simple play, but I enjoyed it. Mm. I was supposed to be the king who'd lost my son in the forest. And these two boys were dressed as old people with, with wigs made of st uh, rope, white. And they had two of the each, had a mug to drink from. And they were drinking mug and there was a horrible smell in them. And they, they couldn't bear it. In my school was forbidden theatre in Spain. Yeah. At that time, yeah. yeah. And I performed in a few plays in school, yeah. 
And then I went to, one day I went to my mother and I said, I'd read, I'd read a, an, an advert in the paper, in the Yorkshire Evening Post, uh, for a place in a drama school for £13 for three months. In Leeds? Yeah, yeah, it was there. Yeah. And I went to my mother and asked if she could help me. And she said she couldn't because she didn't have money enough to put in £13. She needed every penny. And she said, you'll have to go and do something else, which triggered me to go to dancing school instead. I went to tap classes, dance, tap dancing. And then I went to ballet classes in Bower Lane. It was a small school, school upstairs with one studio room. And a girl called June was a teacher. How can you remember that name? I remember her, yeah. June? Yeah, June. <laughs> and there was another girl in that class called June, very fat. So there were two Junes? Yeah, in there. <laughs> and this June, the student, the, the student, I spoke to her. She was very nice, very sweet. And I found her very friendly. And she said, I've got a favourite song which I love here, love when I want to sing. She said, it's called June is Busting Out All Over. <laughs> Do you know that song? Yeah, I do. And this, how is that song? June is busting out all over, all over the meadow and the hill, and the busting out of bushes, rumble river rushes, <laughs> every little wheel beside the mill. June, 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 just because it's June, June, June. It was about June, for sure. Yeah, June, yeah. She was very nice. Yeah. And when did you move to London? When I was 16, after school, ballet school. For 16, I'd left school then, when I was 16. My father was in London, because he'd separated from us, left us abandoned, my mother and the family. And I, was, I went to London, I wrote to him, and he wrote me a magnificent letter. And the writing was perfect, a very beautiful writer. Spelling, everything was perfect. And the style of the writing was perfect. And I was very impressed. Because I've never seen a letter from him. And where did you study in, in, in where did you study in, in London? I didn't, did I, did, I did an audition in London for the International Ballet School, for the International Ballet Company. And she, she took me, in, called me into her office. And she said, how old are you? I said, I've just gone 16. She said, well, you're going up to 17, aren't you? I said, yes. She said, well, that's your, when you'll get called for national, national service. I beg your pardon, not national. <laughs> <laughs> Did you go there? I had to go to national service. Ah. But I was, I was very naive at the time, very, very naive. No, you're not. Well, I'm not so sure. <laughs> at the moment. Uh, and uh, when did you become blind? You, did you become blind in the National Service? or? No, I had, I had sight in the National Service. I could read until I came to, finally to London. Yes. Because I went home from the army when I was just, when I was... After it? the army you came back to... Yes. Leave. I was demobbed. What's that? That's when you, you're sent to Gaza. You're officially out of the army. Oh, I see. You're demob, and I was demob to the end of my 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 service. You see. Yeah. And um, when I went home, I went. I started to work at the Grand Theatre, Leeds. Performed in the Empire, dance class. At an, an exhibition kind of thing. Or, for showing the students. My mother came to that. But could you see then? No, no. No? I got the, the problem of the, my vision was when I, when I came to London early in the 60s. 61, 62. It, 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 it took you by surprise or what? Well, retinitis is... is what is your illness? It, it's retinitis pigmentosa. Oh, I see. And it creeps up on you. It, it, it's, 
It weakens the retina and the nerves in the eye. It's a very gradual process. You suddenly you, you could see less and less. Yeah, because I used to get library books from the library in that that's Queen's Park. And I could read in them. Queen's Park? Yeah. When I was living with Duke oh, in Brunsbury Villas. Yeah, yeah. The last house in Brunsbury Villas. Yeah. I could read the print then. And then they they started the, the, the words started mixing and wobbling about and finally I couldn't read it after all. I had to stop. Go crashing into things. Yeah. And is that to stop you to perform or, or? No, no, it didn't. Because Lindsay Kemp encouraged me to continue. And if it hadn't been for him doing that, I would have stopped. I would have gone some to another way for, for my life, another... Another other, direction. Yes, another direction. Another, I don't know. I don't know what I'd have done. We worked together in with Lindsay. I worked six years with Lindsay. Yeah. And I was assisting him. Yeah. And he was and very clever. Sometimes it was difficult, and sometimes it was very nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's very interesting to work with Lindsay. Mm -hmm. Very, very strong. Very original. And we had a lot of problems with uh, in hotels because Jack had to go every day to a different hotel and then a different stage and different dressing room and then changing costumes and then where is the bed, where is the toilet? I had to take him all over the room. Yeah, yeah. And then bring the luggage and yeah. then take him for supper. It was quite a job. Yes, did. I remember it. Yeah. It seems to be a burden for a while, doesn't it? It was for Sometimes a while. Sometimes it's very difficult. Yes, I very know. tiring to I, help I someone disabled. I feel quite. But sometimes you feel like it's it's very. It, it, it gives light, you know. You feel like happy because you are helping someone. Assisting, yeah. 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 Can I yeah. say something? Yeah. Can you say a bit, Nyako, about how being with Jack? how that was a very positive thing for you. Uh, you mentioned earlier about how you had to look where to go and, mm. and the effect that that had on you as a person. Um, I've always been a very strange person from when I was a child and I always knew things other children couldn't see and couldn't feel. I, I was very perceptive. And that took me to a place where it was, uh, I was many times in another dimension, in another state of consciousness. And that made me very uh, volatile, fragile, because I could feel the energy so much and that provoking me kind of depressions and, and things like this. And then, but Jack, the effect Jack had in me, it was, it was um, grounding. It was a grounding, uh, because he's a very grounding person, he's very together, he's always like, he emanates like peace around him. I'm not so sure, sometimes. That's the feeling I have with you, mm. it's like peaceful. Mm. And and also grounding, and he, he, he took me down to earth really, mm. and he, for me it was very important because I was, I was living, you know. Mm. And many people from my generation left with AIDS and with going crazy and things, and I think I was going that way, you know, I was going really, I yeah. didn't know where I wanted, where I was going, you know, and he gave me a purpose. Mm -hmm. And we we were still together after all these years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can I ask one more question? Um, and you don't have to answer it, but you said about Lindsay encouraged you to go on. Yeah. And and that you you indicated that that was a very important moment, really. Yes, it was. Yeah. Mm. That was in London. Mm. Because I was, I was going. My eyes were going bad then, and I said, "I don't think I, I could continue in this career because it would be too difficult." He said, "You can find a way," and he showed me the way. It's like he helped me so much. He choreographed around me shows. Yeah, because yeah. that's another problem. Because Jack can't move in the stage. Then all the actors we have to be all the time being there, and then. Touching. Many, many times, public don't know. Yeah, didn't yeah. know Jack was blind. I 
I'd like you to say something about that because if you could, it'd be very interesting for other people to hear how how you got round the difficulties in Very your careful, performing career. Careful choreo choreography mm. around me, basically in the centre most of the time. And in the trapeze. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, which I didn't mind. To be in the trapeze, now you like that. Ah, yeah. I once went up in the trapeze. It was really high up in in Rome, I think it was. In Titania. Yeah, and I was on the on the. They were just testing. And it started to swing like this. Mm. And it just went further and further. And I was still on the trip. Oh, yeah, but everybody like that. I was oh, standing. And they're all looking, they're going, Oh, God, what's happening? He's going to kill, he's going to be killed. And <laughs> I was swinging back and forwards. So I was quite happy up there. Yeah. I always wanted to be a trapeze artist. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so Lindsay helped me a lot. He helped you. And the choreography and yeah. the staging, yeah. which was very important, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played Hippolyta in the dream, mm -hmm. in the beginning, and then Titania. They always give him parts, gigantic, popes, kings, queens. It's true, isn't it? Yeah. Because he's the, this kind, he takes so much space, his aura. And when, in the moment he's in the stage, he gets going, you know, very, very fast. Mm. And that's why he always gets, with Derek Jaman, get the Pope too. Mm. He played mm. the Pope. Yes. And True. Caliban. No? Yes, yeah. Caliban. Caliban, yeah. Big parts. Yeah, yeah big, fantastic parts. Mm. Caliban is, is a huge part, really. Yeah. And the other one, the other movie you made with Derek was like, uh, the one at the discotheque? Ah, oh, that was Jubilee. Jubilee. Yeah. I was Borja Gintz. Yeah. That was a big part because you were yeah. leader of the world's media. Yes, that's right. I was a, yes, I was, yeah. Yeah. I wasn't sure about it in the beginning, but everyone loved it in the, on the screen anyway. I wasn't it sure of myself over, in that movie. It comes over brilliantly on the screen. Yeah. So I've been told. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Jack has got a very strong connection also with the, with the earth, with the trees and the dogs and the birds. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's finding it very difficult. The sound now there is too many sounds in. in sounds out there. In the restaurants and in the street yeah. and in the buildings and everywhere. No, Jack. Yes, yeah. It's aggravating because it's effective. Because when you're blind, it's like you perceive every, yeah. all the sounds are are you what do you see. The sounds are the reality are sounds and then and then for him they just go out more and more and more and, and when I'm with friends I don't really feel anything but when I'm with him it's like I develop that the same sensitivity yeah. and we have to leave the restaurants and we have to go from places yeah. you know, because he can the music's be, too loud he and, can bear it. and the voices are shouting over the music you know this fashion of the music in it's the restaurant terrible. for Jack it's terrible yeah. I don't know for normal people yeah. but for him because when he's eating, he needs to concentrate in the food, and then, because and then if his music, he he lost the concentration is less, you know, and 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 that makes it for you difficult to eat in a yeah, restaurant. Yeah. And it? I don't enjoy. Or when there's a lot of people talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. Mm. Very so true. You need to you need to create a space with sound. Yeah, I need to be in a, a place where. There's no in intrusion with sound. Mm. That's the main thing for him is peace. Yeah. More than anything else. I try, yeah, to get peace. I pray to to have peace in my life, yeah. 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 And don't get isolated because in London it's so easy to get isolated. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's days and days and days he's by himself. Yeah. Isn't it? Just Weeks. Weeks. Sometimes months. Yeah. Yeah. No. Mouth? No. Well, <laughs> last, the, last, not this year, not this year, not the last year, but before I was quite alone, longer. Well, you were a long time. Yeah. It was a, a period you were about three or four weeks, yeah. I was longer than that. Yeah. Depended on what you were up to, what you were doing. You had your life to lead, remember, and mm. I didn't want to intrude. You want to say a bit about 
I know what was very important to you, which was um, your dog, Bessie. Bessie, yeah. She's in heaven now. Yeah. Well, she was always in heaven. Yeah, she was a wonderful dog. She was an angel, yeah. absolutely an angel. Yeah, she was. She wasn't a, a normal dog. Yeah. She was very special. Because yeah. Jack Wilkinson, who's doing the props for all this, yeah. he, he remembers her very clearly. Yes, yeah. And his son, Laurie, mm -hmm. used to take her out too, and Max. Yeah. She was a big help. She gave me independence. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. They were, that uh, Bessie gave me independence too. Yeah. Because Bessie was caring of him, and then I could have more time for myself. Yeah, yeah. And that was fantastic. You were doing shopping alone, going yeah, to the park always. alone. Yeah, I'd go up to the Brunsbury, up straight up into. You were doing a normal home. life with yeah, Bessie, really. Yeah. And why, why couldn't you have another dog? Well, a lady came here. Her name was. Fog, foggy now, fogger, fog. <laughs> I think it was fog. Fog. Her name, her surname was Fog. Really? Yeah. Elaine Fogg, I think. <laughs> and she said to me, did you run your dog a lot? And I said, of course I did. I used to run it every day. I used to take it to the park with a ball. And she'd chase the ball forever. And every day, she said, you did that every day? I said, yes. She said, you shouldn't have done that. I said, what do you mean? She said, you, that breaks down their training. Which I, I could understand it. Me but know. I, I had to live with her and I had to give her freedom. And exercise. She was perfect. Yeah. She was beautiful all the time. Yes. But she said, you should never do that. You should keep them working. And that's cruel, yeah. I think. Now, the reason you didn't have another guide dog is because you had, from so many dancing, like Nureyev and so many people, they have the bones with a lot of problems with the... With your feet. With the bones. Mm. With the feet. Yeah. Injury yeah. to the all, feet. All kind of things in yeah. the feet, like Marguerite Fontaine. Man and ruined. And then they had to fuse this uncle, and that made him to lose a lot of mobility. And That's right. He couldn't really have a dog, because yeah. that's, this is why. Well, so you couldn't have the dog because you couldn't take I couldn't, she said, we, we would dog. need to see you doing three sessions in a week when you you practiced a lot with her and you, we'd come and follow you to see how you were doing. And I, I thought, oh, come on. I couldn't deal with it. Yes. Yeah. Because I didn't have all that when I first got met at Bessie. Yeah. You didn't have to go through all that stuff. No. In the, in the centre, we had to do it, but that was part of the training. When I came home, I didn't have to do that. But she said, we have to come here and test you. And, and all, the and state also, I was in with my ankle, and, and long, you know, just recently, I just thought, I can't do it. And I told her, I can't do it. We came here because there was a fantastic field there with ancient trees. And in one year it will disappear, all the trees were cut, and now there's buildings, and then all the park is gone. And that mm. was the only way Jack could, could take Bessie, really. He used to take her there, yeah. He had, he had to let Bessie go, yeah, because of the field. Yeah. yeah. Because you couldn't take her to... Because they built this house Yeah, next they, built, door. they built thousands of houses from yeah. here until until Kilburn, I think. Mm. And all these trees are gone and everything. Yeah. Ah, uh, well. Yes. We best still continue. Yeah, we continue. Way. Yeah. We continue. I first met him in class at the Rombert School okay. with Mim Rombert and she'd accepted me through a, a, an audition for a scholarship I could have without paying. That was quite an honour because yeah. she was a very, very, very hard. rigorous woman, wasn't she? Yeah, she was vicious sometimes, was she? <laughs> I tell you. And I put up with it because it was all free anyway. 
and I worked in the evening in a milk bar in the Strand. It was called the Black and White Milk Bar. Was it? Yeah. In is, the evening. Is that time you worked with Dave Bowie? No. It's not that time. No. That's later. No. I was working in strip clubs then. Doing what? Working with strippers. But <laughs> Doubles. You, you were doing striptease too? No, I wasn't. Oh. I wouldn't show my you know what. <laughs> I was wearing a G-string. Oh, I see. And they, they stripped off. I, I stripped them off. Really? And they took the things, threw them away. But <laughs> they just finished up naked and I stand there with by their side and that was the end of the piece. With the biggest smile. Yeah. What so, were you wearing? A G string. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. Great. And I was studying in the morning in the the Graham School for uh, contemporary dance. Where was that the space? No, it was up in, there was a big, a big hotel, Berners Hotel, mm -hmm. Berners Place. Yes. And behind there was a, a studio which they, they bought or did, somebody got it, I don't know, and made a studio big enough for dance and some small offices. And then they moved to the place. The place. Yeah. And Lindsay, the first encounter with him was in Bradford or in London? It was there in Rombe, in, in London, Rombe. yeah, in the classes. Right. And I didn't like him in the beginning. Why not? I found him very, he, he was very, very upper class. It was like he was from a really upper class family. Really? Very posh. Not northern at all. <laughs> Not like that. No. No. And I couldn't, I couldn't really make up what he was where he was at and what he was doing, you know. His, he, was, he could jump very high. Could he? And Madame Rombert liked that. Did she? Yeah. Did she like him? She seemed to, yeah. But she never used him in her company. Mm. But later he did choreography for her company. Oh, did he? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. He did Cruel Garden, I think. And but you didn't like him at first, but did no. that change? Yes. There was a period when I, I really felt I'd fallen in love with him mm. when I lived in with him in Drury Lane, in a house in Drury Lane, at the, the end of Drury Lane, yes. before the Shaftesbury Avenue, yes. the upper Shaftesbury Avenue. Yeah. The heart of theatre land. Yeah. And mm. when, did the, when did the idea for the company come about, for, the, for, for Lindsay Kemp? For Lindsay, yeah. yeah. Well, we, we, we did a season, we did several seasons up in Edinburgh for the Edinburgh Festival. For all the seasons, you know, for five, I think. Five years we lived there. Goodness. And he got, um, there was a, a building up and near the Travis Theatre, Grass Market. And it was an old rock, rock factory. I mean, rock, that's uh, Edinburgh Rock. For Edinburgh Rock. Yeah, and it was derelict. And he took it over and he took in the group, and I was one of them from the beginning. And he set up this first, it's a Jenny, Jean, Jean Jenny, Flowers, Our Lady of the Flowers. Yes. And it's just called Flowers. But Lindsay called it Flowers. And it was a very nice piece. There were very people from, there were varied people from the streets, from dark alleys, from And everywhere. that was after Bowie, no? No. Oh, that was yeah. before Bowie. Yeah, it was, yeah. Oh. That was the big hit, wasn't it? Yeah. Flowers was the, the piece that really yeah. brought the fame and the fortune. That's right. Even in Spain, you know, when they came to Spain, it was mm. amazing. Mm. Because we just came out of Franco time and suddenly it was a company there and it, it was like such a explosion, you know, like costumes, makeup and jumping people showing they were homosexual in front of everybody and it was fantastic. Well, everyone I know who ever saw Flowers has never forgotten it. No, yeah, it's, it's very such simple. such an impact, you know. It was a very simple production and very cheap too. Not cheap in... in well, everything was done cheap. with materials and... and no, they were all rags and tatters. And things like that, mm. you know. Old things. things it's a fantastic show. Flowers, yeah, fantastic. Really. 
it changed people's lives. Yeah. And that was and the beginning and of, of, a, of a whole period, really, wasn't it? Yeah, it changed. It had a big influence in theatre design, too. Yes. Because Nijinsky was done, we did Nijinsky and Salome, and in this kind of the same, the same pattern, but not with the same set. But it was very similar. They were all very similar productions. And did you have, did you feel that you that you had a lot of creative input with he, Lindsay? Yeah, but he used to leave me, just leave the, me to get on with it. And Everybody I, really. And improvise, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we create our parts. You, have, you had to get on with it and improvise and make sure. There were some points, but how do you arrive to the point? It was very much your way yeah. an improvisation to a point yeah yeah mm. but when he was devising pieces um to accommodate your your impairment with yeah. your sight yeah. um then was was he making a lot of decisions about that or was he collaborating with you he was collaborating yeah that's good yeah, yes. he did I, he he helped me a lot yeah it's very he, interesting because in flowers yeah I was wearing all black, and then I was guiding him. That's right. And nobody knew I was there. It was mm. like a costume. At the back, mm. back of the backdrop. So you were in black behind Jack? Yeah, and I moved him to the stage to the right. And guiding him? Yeah, and then I lift him, and then I pick up him again. And in, and in Midsummer Night's Dream? No. No? No, because in Flower the back is is really black. In Midsummer Night's Dream, it's all it's all scenery and, yeah. and that. And there were lots there was, of people to guide you in that, weren't there? Yeah, Oberon. he goes from one ferry to another ferry. And there's Oberon <laughs> too. And Oberon guides you a lot. Yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yes. True. By the hand. Yes. Yes. So that I think that's very interesting the way because a lot of people are very fascinated by how it was possible for you. To have a a performance career with 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 your impairment, they're very interested in that. Yeah. Well, in fact, the public never knew. They didn't. Oh, would you like to say? The incredible about Orlando that? was was because blind. You was did tell me about Lindsay's part in that. Well, he never he never publicised the fact that I was blind. What no. was the reason? I don't know. He just never did it. We don't know. No, he just kept it because he wanted to be the star forever. And is there any any particular? I, I want to cut that. You want to cut that? Well, it's yeah. We can cut that. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah. Is, can we just the just to finish off? Would you just like to say a bit about David Bowie? Would you like to say a bit about that? Yeah. I performed in David Bowie's Ziggy Stardust, mm -hmm. which uh, uh, was staged at the. The Finsbury Park Empire. I was dancing. I was one of the dancers. With Annie Stainer, a dancer. And Lindsay did the choreography there and performed. And he'd known he'd met David Bowie before that that event. And he'd he'd made friends with David Bowie a couple of years before. I would like to explain something because uh, all the time I worked with Jack, it was like um, when we were in, in, it was a Jack in the dressing room and one in the, in the stage. And it was very different, Jack, from the stage to the dressing room. And then I created a show, especially for him, designed for him, where I was wearing black again. And it was a show for him to bring out into the stage what he was Keeping in in the dressing room house, mm. and mm. it's when we did eclipse. Yeah. That's right, yeah. And it was a spiritual. Because I'm a I'm a channel, I channel, and I channel I channel this show. And it was a, a very spiritual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a good show. Just where where was that? In Edinburgh. In Edinburgh and Valencia. Valencia, yes, yes. And then we went bankrupt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't catch on. No. Was, they weren't I think ready. It was too early. P in the people, 90s. the public weren't ready for it. Mm -hmm. That's all. Can and you that? say a bit more about 
the, the difference between the backstage and, and being on stage because uh, that's very interesting. When well, Lindsay plays to the gallery, you know, it's very smiling and everything is glitter and shining and, yeah. and very you know, big. Yeah, it's very pantomime and, mm. and, and but sometimes the, the heart is suffering and you can really project that is there. And I wanted that suffering and coming out, you know, like express. It's all surface. Yeah, it's very, very Hollywood mm. image, you know, the smile. Always, Lisa always say, smile, smile. Eyes and teeth, smile. smile. He used yeah. to give classes in London. Yeah. A lot in the, in the Covent Garden studios, the, in Flowers, Floral Street. And he used to always say, happy, be happy. Smile. And smile. Project. To the public. Well, his, his style, but you know, yeah. it was something missing in Jack's life, performing, and I wanted to bring that yeah. out. I yeah. think that very much came over in, I felt it came over very much in your Caliban performance. Yeah. Um, some of what Nyaka is referring to, that expressiveness and, and pain as well, I felt that came over in Caliban. Yes, yeah. Yeah, true. Did you feel that? I did a lot in, in Caliban. Yeah. yeah. Apart from the egg. The egg. Did you, yes. <laughs> yes. In, in what Derek Jarman writes about you in, in his book, he says, and, and uh, Jack ate the egg with relish. And I, I thought to myself, was it really with relish or was it acting? No, I did it. Well, yeah. You certainly did. Yeah, I did <laughs> it. But I, I just enjoyed it while it, for, the, for the moment. Yes. Yeah. On camera. Did you have to do several takes with the age? Maybe I had to. Yeah, I remember. I remember doing it three or four times. Oh really? Yeah. Looks brilliant. You yeah. told me you had hepatitis in that moment. I don't know. Oh, oh I had hepatitis yeah. in in no in, in Jubilee. Ah, in Jubilee. Yeah. I thought it was in the temper. Yeah. No, it wasn't in the temper. Did you feel that? In many ways, this is we don't have to have this in, but I just want to ask you this about your 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 acting, that the roles you needed big roles like Caliban yeah. or like the one you did for Jonathan Miller, and it would have been it would have been even better if that had continued, as you told me, yeah, onto yeah. onto the fool in Lear. Yes, that's right. That would have used your range. Mm -mm, and it would have got me on track, mm. really. Would have been help, a big help. It just didn't happen. Yes. He he forgot the idea. I dropped it. I don't know. Yes. He got someone else. Yes. A black man. A black man. Yeah. He played the fool. That a black man. Yeah. In and Lawrence Olivier was, was. Did you see it? No, no. no. Yeah. It was in Manchester. Oh. For a few weeks. Ah, it was only a play. It wasn't a movie. Yeah, it was a play. Ah, I didn't know that. Yeah. A life with life performance. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I wrote to him a lot on tour. He never answered me. Yeah. Yes, because you wanted to be an actor more than you wanted to be a dancer, didn't you? As you yeah. said earlier. Yeah. Or a yeah. singer, because mm. he had a fantastic voice. Yeah. Too. Yes. Yeah. I used to sing a lot. But I would say that you have had a pretty amazing career, wouldn't you? Well, I think so. Thank I'm always you. telling him that because he, sometimes that, he forgot. Yes, I think you have to, from other people's perception of your career, is that it was a fantastic career. Mm. Very inspiring and incredible. Really. Yeah, and Shirley was, was trying to get me to do a book. Shirley is the is the, the, the woman who the scheme manager of this sheltering. Oh, we've met Shirley. Yeah. Well, she was encouraging me to write a book, to tape it. Tape it. And she type it, type it from the tape. Mm. It's a nice sound. Type it from the tape. Tip it up, it on the tape. <laughs> yeah. Well, but I I didn't I couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. I'd need help a lot. Because I've got old now. How strange. I've, I've aged <laughs> quickly this last couple of years. 
Was that because of when you got really ill? Yeah, he Mm. was dying. He was dying. Mm. He was really gone. It was, I had had an abscess on the lower bowel, which burst. That's very bad. Yeah, Yeah, very dangerous, yeah. 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 I I would like to explain one day, uh, Lisa was ill, Mm. and they sent him to Rome. And we were doing Alice in Wonderland. And it was the last performance of Alice in Wonderland. And we went to to theatre in Murcia, in Lorca. Mm. You remember that? Oh, yeah. And I don't know what happened that night. <laughs> but everybody, everybody began to smoke joints and drink. Yeah. And then suddenly the performance began and nobody remembers nothing. It was like, we're just going up and down, you remember? Yeah. Coming out of doors, coming inside doors. Yeah. I was with one costume, then with another costume, and then suddenly the show finished, yeah. and everybody went like that. What happened to that? Fantastic. Yeah. It was amazing that night, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It was so magic. That theatre, you know, it was like. Yeah. I don't, that was Alice in Wonderland. That was, it was the just, real Alice in Wonderland. Yes, it was true to life. Yeah. It was like to be in the fairy tale of Alice yeah. in Wonderland. Yeah. Everything. And everybody was like enchanted in another world. Yeah. Isn't yeah. It? yeah. But that is theatre, I think. That's the that was that me. night. That is the definition of theatre. Yeah. There is an enchantment, I think. Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah. If it's good. Yeah. We were king and queen then. You were, yes, you were king. You were the queen of hearts. Yeah. Another queen. Yeah. <laughs> and I was the king, the husband. Yeah. <laughs> I was so small and Those were the days. Oh, with his head. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I remember the line. Oh, with his head. Mm. <laughs> Fantastic times, and very despairing ones too. That was a very beautiful end.